This is Samurai Jill. This is April O'Neil, live at Sci-Fi Valley Con. We're not live. <laughs> well, I am here with none other than Barry Gordon. Hi. He's Donatello Bebop on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yep. Now, I do want to say the turtle panel is tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. That's, That's right. Saturday. That's going to be incredible. You want to come ask these guys questions. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, we always have fun at the panels. So. You having fun so far this weekend? Having a great time. That's, I'm yes. glad to hear it. Yes. So this is a great time for you to be here because the video game Shredder's Revenge, it just released yep. yesterday. And I heard this is the first time you voiced, you know, Donatello in a video game, but also your first video game in general. Is that right? Yes. I think, well, I think so. I might have done one back a ways, but I, 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 I pretty much this is, I think, the first major What's it thing like that voicing a character in a video game versus a, a TV show? Um, it's very similar, mm -hmm. except that there's a lot of repetition. Mm hmm because you're doing a lot of the lines the over lines, and over right. again, and, and and there are a lot of separate lines, so you don't always know the context until you see the game. And actually, I did do another game, now that I remember oh, okay. it. There was a game for um, for, a, for checks, and I did it online, and I played a general, and I played a bunch of different characters. So I did do one other video game, yeah, <laughs> that they actually did. Uh, so this is my second one. What was it like to step back into Donatello's shell again? Oh, it's cool. I, you know, I got to do that on the Nickelodeon show when we did the Transdimensional mm -hmm. Turtles. Oh, that was awesome. And did a few that episodes. That was awesome. There. So, so that, was, that was great fun. But, um, uh, yeah, it's always fun to, to do turtle stuff. So as we all know, the turtles love their pizza. But what are your favorite pizza toppings? My actual favorite, yes. not Donatello's. Barry Gordon's My favorite pizza favorite. toppings. <laughs> okay, so I always got get what's called. Um, we order from this place. Um, uh, could I? Well, I shouldn't advertise, I guess. But we order from this place in in L.A. called Two Guys. Ooh. Um, it used to be called Two Guys from Italy. Now I think it's just called Two Guys, and they have the Two Guys special, and it has uh, pepperoni sausage. Mushrooms, onions, olives, um, sauce, and cheese. I think that's basically what it has. That sounds delicious. And it is delicious. No curries, no anchovies, no marshmallows. No, <laughs> no anchovies. No. no, and my wife loves a Hawaiian pizza because she loves anything Hawaiian, but I do not mm, like it. No, I cannot get favorite. into pineapple no, on a pizza. Yeah. I just can't do that. Especially not with tomato sauce. Oh <laughs> that no! Doesn't I'm, happen. I'm right for there me. with you. The turtles would probably. Pineapple and pokey works very well, but not pineapple not, no, on no, a no. pizza. <laughs> so you've done, you know, a lot of live action work too. You've yeah. done sitcoms. I yeah. Mean, you were in Star Trek and Curb Your Enthusiasm, yeah. all over the place. A lot of stuff. What has been more personally fulfilling for you, voice work or being in front of the camera? That's a really good question. It, it's it's all fun, um, but I would say that you know the opportunity to voice work is a lot more like a party. I mean, really, with these guys, right? it, and with these guys, it, it really is. So it's a lot more. I mean, it is just so much fun, and there's so much less. Involved. I mean, when I did Star Trek, you know, uh, when I did um, the Ferengi on in Deep Space Nine, you know, four hours of makeup, you know, so yeah, I uh, about even that. the Bolian was three hours of makeup. So, so you know, to do that, all of the repetition of doing doing takes, doing different angles, do, and with this, we just go in and we studio and we throw up some music stands and. We read it through, and it's fast. I mean, we're usually out of there in two hours, you know, three hours. But, um, but we just have so much fun doing it. So, so I have to say that, it, that from that point of view, it's wonderful. But, I, you know, I also enjoy doing live action. I mean, I love doing sitcoms, and sitcoms are, are really fun. And you get to work, again, with a live audience on some of them, some of them not. Archie Bunker's Place was not a live audience, and... You know, fish was so. You know, it 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 varies. So. so, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's a lot of people's favorite cartoons when they were growing up. What was one of the first cartoons or shows you remember seeing as a kid that had an impact on you? 
probably Huckleberry Hound. <laughs> you know, who said the, that? Was it Townsend that said that? The, Hanna, the, the <laughs> Hanna-Barbera shows. Huckleberry yes. Hound, Classics. Yogi Bear, you know, and then, and then, and then they always had the the double feature so it was the Huckleberry Hound but then there was another character so they'd have Snaggletooth or you know they and they were just such rich fun characters and then of course they moved into prime time with the Flintstones and the Jetsons and I mean I would not miss a Flintstones episode when I was young so. Classics. <laughs> So you've been in this business a long time. You know, you worked you know, since you were a child, yeah. right? And you were a singer, too, when you were a yeah. kid. Yeah. If you could give one piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? Um, it would probably be to find the girl that I met 30 years ago instead of the other women that I met 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, they, they were fine. But, but I mean, I've been, I've been really happily married for 30 years. And I didn't know if that was going to happen with me, but it did. And, um, uh, and, and it's been a, a really blissful time, you know, these last 30 years. Uh, so I, I, you know, I thank heavens for, for Gail, my wife. And um, so what advice I would give a young person is basically hang in there. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a great business. It's a hard business. There's a lot of disappointment. A lot of what, I mean, I taught also. So I would tell my students, you know, that what they see as rejection, you cannot see as rejection. It's simply that their vision of a character is different than what you're bringing to it. And that does not mean that you're wrong. It just means that they have a different picture in their heads. And that's true with on camera, it's true with voiceover, you know, because with voiceover, a lot of the time you're not with them. You can't ask them what they want. You're just doing a, you know, a, a, maybe an audition at home or, and sending it in. So you have no way to know, you know, and they're just going to pick the voice that lands for them. And if you do enough of it, you know, you can be fortunate like I was and, and, and do a lot of work and have a great career. But you don't give up and you don't take it personally because if you take it personally, then, then you got problems. That is really good advice. Thank you for that. Thank you for your time, Barry. It was it's great getting pleasure. to talk to you. Thank don't you, miss Joe. that turtle panel at 4.30 yes. p.m. Saturday. It's going to be great. All right. We have a good time. We do. We do. Thank All you, right. Barry. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff.